thank you all for uh, being here, and thank you all for organizing this. So, um, when I saw Diana's work, this exhibition, it uh, very much put me in mind of the Adriatic Sea, because I grew—that's where I grew up on the on the Adriatic coast. So. Um, this first piece is in response to the entire exhibition, but in particular, there's one painting when you go in, when you walk in, it's on the right wall. Um, it's number 24, and it's titled Language. The name of this poem is Homeland Iridescent. Each color is a wave, a language. The totality of them, the ever rising and falling bariolage of tongues is an ocean. And what is there but to swim? Propel the body through the reticent waters of teal, the chanting of chartreuse, the prattle of purple, and the professions of saffron, the vesper of the burning sunset and the midnight moan. Swim that communion of color and thousand word where you end and I begin in an ever-shifting ripple. Color inscribes itself it's like this. We made blue love on a blue bed to a blue song in a room full of blue. And beyond the swaying blue grass bloomed a blue cloud. The sea holly spiked and the muscadine swelled into speech. The Red Sea and the Black Sea folded into themselves one blue wave into another. The sea willed the blue, so much blue. Mouthfuls of mussels, hard blue seabirds, the ransom of rain. Roadside chicory rayed a fiesta of blue petals and the unbent irises tucked their blue tongues out and harmonized. Azul, modri, goluboy, galazio, scure ble. Even the limestone turned blue and tomorrow under the sky full of weather, will dive off the cragged turquoise, bathe in the clear opal. Wink, wink. <laughs> I know, this was really subtle. <laughs> That's what poets do. <laughs> so uh, the following poem is titled Nastic Movements. Nastic is a word that describes the movement in response to light, so flowers that close up at night and in the morning they uh, open up, so nastic movements. Sweetness. Back home the Adriatic tightens around the shore like a snake around the hot rock. In each house on the island there is a table. On every table a loaf, round as a Slavic face, ashes in the oven. Ashes on the domes of the bread, ashes on the roof of one's mouth. Last year, my cousin offed himself in his house. Our family, scattered around the world, got caught in the phone web, catching up with each other, and we forgot his body. Things were funny, though. Phone in hand, someone picked her nose and pulled out a bloody fingernail. Another drew a tough, tar-black hair from between her teeth, a pubic curl, and wondered whose it was. It happens. <laughs> Listen, in Sarajevo, the fit ones ran through the sniper alley. The rest took up dying. Longing is a trick, baby. Go inside a rock, a ringtone, the red coal of my tongue, and you'll only taste yourself. Babe, keep the curtains parted. See the moon tossing her long white hair across the ocean. Hear its steady back arcing roar. Look at the chenille strip of black sand, that fool walking with a flashlight. Listen to the ocean and you'll come apart like a love letter in rain. Babe, even dandelions lose their heads at night. Um, the next poem was written in response to my um, in response to a memory that I had as a kid, um, I grew up in Yugoslavia, so we, basically we were poor, we, we can call it communist socialist, but translated into just like basic living. And the way that at one point I sort of 
felt the reality of it was the candy was really basic. And I had some friends whose dads worked as guest workers in Germany. We thought they were really um, privileged to be working abroad, and those kids had uh, much fancier candy. And usually it was colorful, and it smelled good. And we were stuck with just these like basic white chewing sticks gums. And so, but we figured out a way <clears throat> to make our chewing gum more um, exciting, which was to bite off the tips of the coloring pencils and to make the chewing gum <laughs> whatever color you wanted it to be, right? <laughs> And just pretend like you've got a daddy that works in, I don't know, somewhere <laughs> in Dortmund or whatever. Okay, here we go. In the color grinding years. In the pre-war and in the post-war, we made colors. Usually in the school bathroom between classes, a swarm of girls crowding graffiti-covered walls. Some of us entered the narrow stalls in pairs, one pulling jeans down to her knees, her shirt a wrinkled valance over her snatch, babbling as she eased herself off, the thin piss streaming down the porcelain bowl, while the other cigarette between her lips added to the wall art, don't pour fucking confidence into me, I will drown. Others, by the sink, bit waxy tips of colored pencils and crushed them into the pale stick of chewing gum, torching it into something bright, explosive, reckless. Between teeth, the meat-red pigment in the flesh of the gum blossomed into a striped carnation. A green nib bust into a spiky horse chestnut. Meanwhile, our mothers picked stones out of green coffee beans, dyed our clothing in soup pots. In those years, we had a case of color madness, busied ourselves concealing our featherless void until everything was disco fresh. All was sunny for Scythia, foxy foxglove, the provocative purple of sage, lilac, blue lilac, God. Lilac so blue is the one color I still notice, mouth still watering. Black daisies. This one's got an epigraph uh, by the famous poem by Charles Baudelaire, It's Time to Get Drunk. Black Daisies. We are inside the barrel of a heat wave, my abstinent American and I. The earth, the sky, the strange Nevada sun blazing in between. A tattooed river courses up his pale force forearm, and a mustached koi threads upstream, the fish rendered separate from its world. Across the table, hopeless Jack slings ice cubes down the canyon of his mouth, crushes them with a metallic tang, says, I've been sober for over a decade and I still can't sit still. The roof vent exhales a steamy breath. The sun glares out through the ground. I've spent my life in badly lit rooms, and the only thing this brightness reminds me of is my cousin kneeling in the wooden confessional, confessional in front of the delirious light of God, pouring in through the latticed partition, and him letting out a loud, wet fart. It's sitting in light we can't do. The heat is just a bitter oleander, desert thrift. A clod of dirt you're starting to feel like, and there is nothing you can do about it but wish for a spit of rain. Though now I want a narrow vase with black daisies before me, not a lush flower bed or a shadowy bank pearled with dew, just a spray of black daisies curving like script over uncomplaining earth, or crotch hair shy curling into its own heat, little wicks drawing fuel to the flame. I want to wet light absorbing language, a crawling heat converting argot, and I want to drink it like liquor. Two more poems. Um, this one's called Wild Wasting and it was written also in, um, for Arts Beacon, uh, what Opal mentioned. Uh, this was, I think, like last year. Um, Wild wasting. So this was, in other words, why I'm mentioning this. This was written in the thick of the pandemic and sort of spending more time by ourselves than usual. Silence is a girl silenced. Sometimes she's a boy with a clean face. 
it's a glass of clear water, and that which the river took. Silences the man at his piano, wondering why the soldier's song doesn't sound that sonorous on his instrument. Is the pen in my hand, almost. Snapdragons wilting in the vase, room refuted by night. I dip my pen into the wet eye of the dark and take away its quiet. We tear silence out of dawn's ripid silk, black silk, silk with slippery cries of love. In the newspaper is Sunday. The city wears its favorite weather. In the mirror are memory, mouth, magnificence of sex. Silence is no absence. It is a man who left with a tail between his legs and in that departure remain. I'll raise your glass to the still syllable. Cheers, chin chin, nazdravlje, slanče, salud. Look. Silence, an immigrant who never arrives home. Emine Sevgi Uzdamar sitting tongue twisted in the city of Berlin. My great grandpa, tonguing oysters in Biloxi. Quiet, the curved face of a leaf. Duct tape bondage and almonds taking trouble to bloom and bitter bale fries. Our sleepy feet. A vesper to the strand of hair stuck to lips. Silence is a wild wasting. And we, Mother Silence, are we your still song? And the last one is going to be about the sea again. I, I guess I do that a bit. Um, it's, it's titled Skirt Dripping Sea. The sky has, the sky has been curdling for days. The slow bloom of pale tumors drifting against the oily lid of slate gray. Smoke tusks coil from burning leaf piles, and in treetops, unfurled black wigs, shallow nests gape emptied of sunlight. The earth smells of whey and udders. There is no dust in winter, no weeping. Fish don't bark from tangled, slippery nets. Instead, the stethoscope cold silence and the buttery gold glow of lichen furring over lifeless branches, stiff ropes, their crusty flounce on aluminum hulls. And the wind that slices the leathery skin of the sea, churns stale water in the hollows of boats, rattles the rigging metal like a coin in a dryer, pulls the sails, slaps and swallows them, turns them into writhing disembodied tongues, the urge to lick themselves. This wind, its breath of sibilance and smoke, crass phosphorus and bitter salt, of muck and smothered bark and tired sailcloth. It wanders in through the door that's been left ajar, grazes the wet skirt hanging on the wooden chair, the worries that gathered in its folds, and nudges your sex that is a flightless bird in a fallen nest. Thank you.